we have an entire, I, I mentioned tens of thousands of people who are volunteering for this movement here who are, I know uh, some of them are warriors, they're resilient. And I know also that a good chunk of people are upset. Uh, you know, they're let down a little bit. There was something that we knew was a long shot, but it put so much energy in it. You, I don't know if this is a, in a book that you wrote or just a concept you've come up with, but you were talking about, you talk about winning the first quarter. You mentioned it earlier to me. Um, and, you know, you talk, you were saying, you know, it's about what you do from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. I was thinking I get up at nine. But, uh, <laughs> but you were talking about, you know, winning the first quarter and how does that apply to a group of people like us who right now feel like we just went all out for something and we're going to need to leverage whatever the remains are of this thing that we failed in one perspective, maybe gained in another. Yeah. So, so I'll try to, I'll try to explain it as clean as I can using like a real life example. So the school I coached at is a school called Kip Houston. It's a Kip is a chain of charter schools. I'm sure, you know, anybody education is familiar with them. Um, And the school was like notoriously, academic base like they used to literally have pep rallies to give out report cards so like the the idea of like a pep rally for the cheerleaders and the football players like that wasn't the culture so when we came in you know we got a bus kick the first season you build momentum you build championships in the off season right so the idea of you know you know no matter how much momentum you had you whether you started or not you were limping into your first game and so I see it again as a coach different. What I see is just like an a NFL or NBA team who wins a championship, the short side is your offseason gets shorter. What you guys should really frame yourself as is, no, your offseason got longer. Like this is an opportunity to build momentum. So, so you're re- ready to run through the brick wall in 2024. Like, so, yeah, you know, lick your wounds and, and your butt hurt for a minute. You get that after you lose a game. But the whole thing is, it's, it's way harder to teach after a win as it, than it is after a loss. So learn from your lessons, lick your wounds, and now you've got that much momentum than whatever party is going to lose in the next 60 days. And so I mean, to me, it's about reframing. What do you think, Brennan? I mean, for, for however many thousand people are looking down on the ground trying to figure out where that optimism is that you mentioned, you know, why be pessimistic if you get nothing from it? I also know that there's a pull toward pessimism that sometimes feels difficult to sidestep so that you can become optimistic. Anything you want to address on that and it can and please be selfish as you want and include, um, you know, your own lessons that, and the things that you teach. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Zach, I, I think the way that I see it, cause, cause I was there, right. You know, I woke up at some point in my life and I just said, crap, you know, I can't solve anything. Like I'm just one person. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with my life? <laughs> Right, and I'm going to be dead in a couple of decades too. So where, where's the hope, right? But I think what I learned that gave me a lot of optimism is by answering the following question that nobody on the planet asked themselves. We always ask the same question. What are we the most passionate about? Passions are great, but here's the problem with them. They're general. They're nonspecific. They don't get us anywhere. We can be passionate about our dogs, our family, but we can't mold out that problem unless we're in that 5 to 10% of people who already have it. But the question that we should ask more of is what is the world's easiest problem to solve? Mm. Out of all of the problems out there, because there's a bunch, trust me, you could just turn on the news for a couple of minutes and they're just going to list them all out for you so you can just take notes. Out of all of those problems, which problem, just one, are you personally going to take ownership of? My life philosophy is simple. Solve two problems, and hopefully I get them both done before I'm dead. One is public speaking. If the world, if I don't democratize that information and I die not doing it, I'll take responsibility for that. The second problem is the water crisis, because I think it's the world's easiest problem besides that. But the punchline is, is I'm taking personal responsibility to getting those two things done. So I put all my energy, all my resources, all my money into those two problems. But the punchline that I want to drive for everyone who's listening is if everybody did that, instead of complaining about the thousands of problems that we have, we would all take ownership of our own individual set of two problems and we'd solve problems overnight. 
I mean, Elon Musk is solving seven problems and he's probably got four out of those already solved. We don't need to be like Elon. All we need to do is pick one for all of us and the world would just be a better place.